Hello, my name's Fiona Veach Smith, and I'm the author of the Poppy Denby Investigates series, their murder mystery set in the 1920s. Now, today I'd like to talk to you about how I'm planning to emerge, or perhaps even escape, from lockdown. Like most of you, I should imagine, in the global pandemic, you've been shut in your house for most of this time, for the last 15 months, 16 months perhaps, and haven't really been able to get out anywhere on your usual adventures. For me, the most exciting thing has been the recycling, once every uh, second week. I even found myself in the most desperate times actually putting on some jewellery to go out and put out some stuff into the compost bin. And then, my most exciting, exciting thing was the weekly shop to the local supermarket, wearing my mask as usual. So yes, my world has shrunk and it's not the the wonderful, exciting place that it normally is. Not that it's normally that exciting, but I am beginning to emerge from lockdown. Like the rest of the UK, uh, next week, I'm going to be going out there into the world and doing something slightly more adventurous than I have been. And what I'm planning on doing is going to spend the night in a hotel that's only 20 minutes down the road from me. Not a great adventure, you might think, but for me, it's exciting. And I think that's one of the things about the global pandemic is the positive thing that has come out of it. One of the positive things is how we've perhaps all learned to appreciate the small things, the things that we took for granted before. So a single night in a hotel in the city that I actually live is a bit of an adventure. But why am I going there? Well, I normally research my books by going to the places that my characters go to. Now, I'm starting a new series which is set in 1929 in Newcastle about a young woman who comes and inherits a detective agency and she spends a couple of days, not just one night, in the Royal Station Hotel in the middle of Newcastle and I'm going to be going along and doing the same as she is. I'll also be having dinner with a, a friend in the restaurant, which finally we can do instead of sitting huddled on the pavement in the freezing cold as we have been. Those of us who actually have ventured out I haven't even done that. So yes, I'm really looking forward to, to that excitement. Beyond that, what am I doing? Well, I've booked in August to go to the Dorothy L. Sayers conference in Oxford. I was booked in there last year, uh, but of course they had to cancel it due to the pandemic. But pandemic allowing, we're going to be doing it again this August. And I'm going down for three or four days and I'm going to be talking and absorbing all things Dorothy L. Sayers. And she's one of my favourite authors and one of the great inspirations for my Golden Age mysteries. So yeah. August is going to be a big, big month for me, unless, of course, something changes and we, we have to we have to cancel it. Now, I'd also like to read something for you. Last year, during lockdown, I wrote the sixth in my Poppy Denby Investigates series. Poppy Denby, for those who don't know, is a, a journalist who is originally from the North East but lives in London and um, investigates murders on the side. And in the sixth book in the series, set in 1925, Poppy goes to Oxford. Coincidentally, it actually is a coincidence, it's, it's, I, I didn't plan it like that. Poppy goes to Oxford and uh, she investigates the murder of a female scientist who is found in a basement laboratory called the Crystal Crypt. Now my editor has actually just sent through a draft cover for it, so let me see if I can show it to you. Technology allowing, of course. Yes, there we go. The Crystal Crypts, book six in the Poppy Denby Investigate series, coming out in November this year. And I'd just like to read an extract from that around the theme of escape. So, Poppy is in the Crystal Crypt, in an office in the basement laboratory, and unfortunately it's on fire and she's being tied up. So let's see how Poppy manages to get out of this. Poppy levered herself up out of the chair, thanking God the men had not thought to tie her to it. She didn't bother trying the door, she knew it would be locked, and she didn't bother trying to get Sinclair's key. It was at the bottom of a basket, the flames. Instead, she used her mouth to undo the belt around her wrists. She was making progress, but then 
saw the flames lapping closer to the professor. She stopped what she was doing and dragged the unconscious man to the far side of the office, where the flames had not yet reached. Then she gave a final tug on the belt and freed herself. She was relieved that she'd been in this office before and had noticed the heavy, antique scientific instruments on the mezzanine balcony, reached by a wrought iron spiral staircase. Fortunately, the flames had not yet reached the stairs. She ran up them, grabbed the first heavy brass object she could lay her hands on and swung it with all her might at the window on the mezzanine. The glass shattered. Then she prodded at the remaining shards. The window was level with the courtyard behind the science museum, facing the Bodleian Library. She took a moment to breathe in the life-giving air, clearing the smoke from her lungs. As she felt the heat of the fire at her back, she was very tempted to scramble through to safety. But she couldn't leave the professor to die in the flames. She screamed for help, once, twice. But when no one came, she knew what she had to do. With a quick prayer for help and strength, she ran back down the stairs to get the professor, the flames nearly lapping the bottom of the staircase. But not quite yet. The air was acrid with smoke, catching in her throat. Poppy once again steadied her breathing, assessed the lie of the land and leapt from the stairs to the chair, an island in a sea of flame. Then, like a game of hopscotch, negotiated her route to the professor. Poppy grabbed him under the arms, braced herself against his weight and dragged him to the foot of the stairs the heat and smoke driving the air out of his lungs. She stumbled to her knees, gasping for breath, desperate not to swoon. Then she shook her head, steadying her resolve. She needed to get out before she succumbed. But there was no way she would be able to lift the man up the stairs. If Daniel was with her, but he was not, she had made the decision to do this on her own. Her heart screamed. She would have to leave the professor. She knew she was condemning him to death. But what else could she do? And that, ladies and gentlemen, is where we're going to have to leave Poppy. If you perhaps would like to read what happens to her and how she manages to escape, The Crystal Crypt's coming out in November this year. And if you haven't already read the Poppy Denby Investigates series, you can start with The Jazz Files, the first book, which is about the death of a suffragette that Poppy investigates. And that was shortlisted for the, the CWA Historical Dagger in 2016. Well, I hope that you have got something planned to escape or to emerge from your lockdown. And I really hope that 2021, the rest of this year, is going to be somehow pandemic free and things are going to look a lot brighter for all of us. Goodbye.